Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You tell your preacher too. We thank God for this man of God. I was gonna go to the preachers, but I'm scared y'all gonna really preach. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this up a little bit. Amen. Scared to bring apostles and pastors up, Reverend Burns and and uh, and then uh, possibly y'all be ready, but not now. All right. <laughs> All right, this is this this is amazing. It's funny. I, I he really got me on on um, on where I wanted to go anyway with with Delegate Hamilton because Miss Mary the Archer she was here last year. Oh my God, and she gave a great great speech. Oh my goodness, I mean it was powerful. It was so powerful. I was like, oh, you know, you got to be with the NAACP, but because the bylaws, not because she was white, but it was because the bylaws. She 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 didn't work here nor live in Newport News, so I couldn't make her the chair. But I was like, oh yeah, you're gonna be the chair. I thought she was in Newport News. You know, you just assume. <laughs> but I was so far off and you know, people were calling me, you know she don't work. It's like, how they know where she worked? It's just research, amen. But I don't know, you know. Hey, there's me to tell you what's wrong. But anyway, that's the story. But she's such a powerful woman of God. So we're gonna call former state delegate, uh, delegate Phil Hamilton and his daughter, Miss Meredith Archer, who is a very powerful woman of God who has been speaking on his behalf for so long. Hallelujah. Yes. Testing. So my dad wants me to talk first, and then he'll follow, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Andrew Shannon and Dr. Maxwell, the SCLC, the NAACP, for once again asking me to come speak today about criminal justice reform as we honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. If you were here last year, you may remember my speech regarding my family's experience with the federal criminal justice and judicial system, as for the past decade, my dad, Former Delegate Phil Hamilton was investigated, tried, and incarcerated in a prison camp for nearly eight years by the federal government. By the grace of God, he was released to the control of a local federal halfway house on June 27, 2019, and has lived with my family and I since that time. His home confinement period ended in October, two months early, thanks to provisions in the First Step Act, signed into law in December 2018. We're grateful for the passage of this legislation, but there's still so much more to be done to ensure justice for all under our current criminal justice system. <clears throat> the reality is that most Americans turn a blind eye to the rampant injustices in our court and criminal justice systems, either because they deem those behind prison walls as criminals who are merely getting what they deserve, or they are simply unaware of what is really happening in our courts, jails, and prisons. For many, their eyes aren't opened unless and until they become personally affected by our criminal justice system. I can speak from personal experience when I tell you that innocent until proven guilty is nothing more than a catchphrase in the American federal court system. In the rare occurrence that a defendant actually enters a federal courtroom, they are treated by court officials as criminals, especially because federal defendants usually don't even go to trial. In fact, only 2% of defendants reject, reject plea deals and go, choose to go to trial. Why is this number so low? Because federal prosecutors routinely threaten defendants and their families if they don't accept a plea agreement. This extortion is a common practice in the toolbox of federal prosecutors, and 98% of defendants give up their right to a trial while under duress. For the 2% that reject a plea agreement and choose to have their day in court, there is a glaring difference between the way federal prosecutors are treated compared to defense attorneys, defendants, and their families. Juries are human, and when they repeatedly see a defendant treated like a criminal, it becomes harder for a jury to make an unbiased decision. Cameras are not allowed in federal courtrooms for a reason, and it's to keep the American public in the dark. Did you know federal defendants cannot testify on their own behalf without the risk of receiving a longer sentence? Did you know post-trial motions go back to the trial judge for review instead of a judge with fresh eyes, with no previous involvement in the case. Did you know prosecutors can hold multiple grand juries if a grand jury determines there is not sufficient evidence to indict? Did you know government witnesses can be granted immunity to, quote, toe the government's line? Did you know federal judges can have such a brazen bias against defendants that they can and have written books that are dedicated to, quote, all prosecutors, and no one bats an eye? I didn't know any of these things. 
Neither did my dad or our family until our experience. Federal judgeships are lifetime appointments. In layman's terms, this means they are not questioned or held accountable by anyone. They say and do whatever they want, knowing they have absolute power. No one in this country is free from the risk of falling victim to the atrocities allowed within the federal justice system. No one is immune to the risk of being wrongfully convicted or sitting in prison, which brings a whole other host of problems, such as medical neglect and federal correctional institutions being run as big businesses, rather than focusing on rehabilitation. Incarceration rates in America are alarmingly high. Make no mistake, this is purposeful, as it's all about the almighty dollar, rather than justice. The great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that there is an invisible book of life that faithfully records our vigilance or our neglect. This means we must fight the fights that need fighting, not just the fights that we think we can win. Dr. King reminds us that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This includes our courtrooms, jails, and prisons. We are all entitled to justice, even those deemed as criminals. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed in 1968, but as long as we do our part to fight for justice for all, he will never be silenced. Thank you.